Zen coding is a popular way that allows us to rapidly create our markup. You can use it by installing the plugin if your code editor supports it, and usually there will either be a tab trigger or perhaps command underline. There's lots of different ways. Just check the documentation for your editor to see how you trigger it. Let's take a look though at some quick things you can do with it. If I type a element name and press tab, it will expand to the full tag name and place the cursor in the middle. So if I need to create an H4, rather than doing H4, my heading, instead I type H4 tab, my heading, it's much quicker. But we can do even more. If I need to apply an ID, I can type pound and notice I'm using the CSS syntax, my ID. And if I press tab and I do not specify an element name, it will assume that I am using a div. That's the default. So let's try this, hit tab, that expands. If I need to override it and I say, I want a UL with an ID of my ID, again, I press tab and now that will expand as a UL. So there's a quick teaser. Let's go ahead and get this installed. Now, I already have it set up on Sublime, but if you go to the home page and search for Zim Coding, it's stored on code.google.com. It'll show you how to use it, and it'll also show you the various editors that it's available for. So right here, you can see whether you use TextMate or Espresso on the Mac, and there's even Notepad++. It's so popular that it's gonna be available for just about anything, Coda, Dreamweaver. Now, as my editor, Sublime Text, is relatively new, it may not be listed here, but it probably is supported. So let's search for it. Zen Coding, Sublime Text, and see what comes up. Now we can see, sure enough, there is a form topic, and we can see, go here for Sublime Text 2 and this will show you exactly how to install it. It's very simple. So I'm not gonna go through all of this with you. You can let us know if you have any issues with it, but it's a fairly simple process to show you how to get that set up. So now, once that's set up, you can then use it, and you may need to restart your editor for it to take effect. Now, let's take a look at some more advanced things you can do. In addition to creating elements, you can create sub elements. If I type div, and then a less than sign, a different element that will expand to a parent-child relationship tab. And now notice that creates the div and the paragraph within, and it automatically knows to put the cursor there. So that's really helpful. You'll use this often for list items because you will never add a list item without it first being nested within a UL. So think how long this takes to do the UL, then indent, then do the LI, then scroll back and then type. In this case, I type UL, LI, tab, and then begin typing. What if we need to add two list items? UL, LI, and I can say times, like math. Times four will create four, click tab. And what's nice about this is I can type one, and tab will continue to take me through each stop point. Two, three, four. Isn't that really amazing? I was really excited the first time I learned about this. Let's take a look at other options. What if I want to apply a value automatically to it? I can type UL, LI, and within curly braces, the value that I want to apply. Now, if I hit tab right here, you'll see it's not going to work, and that's because it wants the cursor to be at the very end of the string. So if I hit tab here, that's not going to work. I have to go to the very end and then click it, and you'll see that takes effect. So you can think how quickly you could create a base layout. For example, let's say I wanna create a layout and we'll create a wrapping div with the class of wrap. And within it, it needs to have a header element because it's gonna have our header. I'm gonna go into the header and now I'm gonna have an H1 element and that H1's value will be my website. Let's keep it like that. I'm gonna copy this so we can continue on, but let's see what we have so far. Tab, and now created that for us. Let's continue on though. If I want to create a sibling of the H1 element and not a child, I can use plus. That refers to sibling. And now I could say create a nav element and within the nav element we'll have a unordered list with a list item and we'll have four list items. Tab and now the cursor is first on the H1. If I hit it again, it's now on the list item. I could say home, about, contact, portfolio, and you're done. And look at all of that markup we created in next to no time at all. It's really amazing. Now, generally, these list items will be links as well. So let's fix that. And we'll say wrap. We'll do this quickly. Header, nav, h1, my website. And then we'll have a nav element, ul, li. And there's going to be four list items. And each list item is going to contain an anchor tag. So now you can see I can tab through each one. And notice it knows to place a tab within the wrap. So that could be 
home.com tab and that will be the value for the anchor home and I can keep tabbing through these and if I need to go back I can hit shift tab but what if we want to apply a default value to the href maybe in this case it's not linking anywhere so we want to use a hash I can use brackets and I can say href equals pounds and now if I tab, you'll see that that value has been applied. With five seconds worth of work, we've created a layout. And if we view that in the browser, we have a very minimal website, but we are able to do this in roughly five or 10 seconds. It's really, really amazing. So what you should take away from this is, if you wanna create an element, type the element name followed by the trigger in your editor. In mine, it's tab. If you want to apply IDs, type the element name and then the CSS symbol for class or ID, which is pound or period. If you want to create nested children, you do less than sign followed by the child. You can then continue again if you need to, and you can also apply values by using curly braces. Finally, make sure when you expand, your cursor is always at the end of the string. And lastly, when you want to create siblings, for example, content, and then you also want to create a div for main and then another div for footer or something like that, that will create siblings. So have fun with this. I was amazed when I first found this because it saves so much time. In the next lesson, I'm gonna teach you about grids and how they can rapidly increase the speed at which we code websites.